Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let me follow up briefly on my earlier video where I talked about Floyd Mayweather versus Manny Pacquiao. I made the argument that Floyd's game's a bit more complete than Manny Pacquiao's. Now, someone, a subscriber, in the comment section, I believe his name's Jerry, made a great point where he said, look, you know, history is replete with fighters who didn't have offense on their back foot, who were phenomenally successful, right? He's made the point that some of the guys with less than complete games, right? Homicide Hank, uh, Henry Armstrong, right? Regarded by Ring Magazine as the second best fighter of something like the last 80 years. Uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, senior. Uh, these were guys with front foot games who came forward who didn't have complete games, right? Who were offensively minded, uh, who were successful. Now, my response to that Right, and the implication is that you don't have to have a complete game to be successful. Right, the uh, more sophisticated fighter with the more complete game doesn't necessarily win all of the matches. Now, my response to that is I agree. Boxing's rock, paper, scissors. Right, someone could miss on certain categories but could be an A-plus on other categories and can dominate. No question about it, right? You have guys like that dominating right now. But, right, in the case of Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd Mayweather, we've seen Pacquiao fail against more complete fighters, right? I would argue that the traits that Marquez has right, are very similar to what Floyd Mayweather has, right? Marquez's ability to counter Pacquiao as Pacquiao jumps in, right? The counter-punching ability. We know that that works against Manny Pacquiao, right? We know that. My point is Floyd can literally imitate that style which has already proven to be successful against Manny Pacquiao. Let me point out, too, that Floyd is a defensive master. He's one of the very best in boxing history defensively. When you look at his game, Floyd's better defensively than he is offensively, right? My point to you is a guy like Manny Pacquiao, who is unlike Homicide Hank, Right, Pacquiao's predominantly one-handed in terms of his power shots from distance, right? Because Pacquiao is one-handed from distance and can't surprise you with offense backing up, I think that's going to give Floyd the upper hand, right? I'll concede Pacquiao is more charismatic and might be favored by the crowd and the judges during the close rounds. Let's shift gears. Let's talk about why I think Gennady Golovkin, or Gennady Golovkin, as his trainer Abel Sanchez says, uh, beats Martin Murray. Now, I've made an earlier video on this. Let me throw out a couple of extra ideas, right? I believe pacing and spacing favors Golovkin, right? Let's talk about the pacing first. I believe to beat Golovkin, you have to get him out of his comfort zone, right? To me, the kind of guy who would give him a hard time would be, I know this will sound odd, prime Daniel Gill, who lost by third round knockout to Golovkin, right? A guy who's going to hover around you and lift the room temperature, right? Force you out of second gear. I believe Golovkin likes to start fights in second gear. He doesn't run across the ring at you. Right? Rather, what he does is he watches you from distance. As I like to say, he's a cautious stalker. 
right? He watches you from distance. He kind of pressures you a little bit with his feet, but he's outside looking at you, trying to figure you out. He's reading you in the early rounds, right? He's not a soldier. Rather, he's a guy who's seeing the lay of the land before he figures out what he's going to do. Now, I believe that a guy who can disrupt that, right, who can make Golovkin impatient, right, a guy who, like, let's say, Prime Giel, who would be circling him, throwing jabs, right, not as far out of the pocket as Giel was when he fought Golovkin, or an Andre Ward, right, an athletic guy who can literally get up on you and keep you guessing, right? Ward had a shoulder injury in his right shoulder. So Ward delivered, uh, Ward developed a great left hand, right? Now Ward's right shoulder is fixed. Ward knows how to fight inside. He's big, he's physical, right? And so an Andre Ward who could get inside and change tempo, right? Force Golovkin early before Golovkin figures out the lay of the land to shift out of second gear into something he's not comfortable with, third gear or fourth gear, right? Who could force Golovkin to be active like Kasim Uma, and that's the tape to look at. Forced Golovkin to be active, that guy'd have a chance. In other words, you have to change the pace of the fight on Golovkin. Now, one of the problems I have with Murray is Murray himself fights in second gear. Right? Murray is really more of a reactive type guy. So he's fighting Sergio Martinez, right? He's the challenger. He's fighting Sergio in Sergio's backyard. He knows that he needs to make an impression to take the champ's title. You're not going to beat a hometown hero who has the belt by a photo finish. And with the fight hanging in the balance, needing to close strong to win the last two rounds, Martin Murray comes out tentative. Martin Murray's in second gear, even with the belt on the line. Whether you think Murray won that fight or not, Murray didn't close fast. He's still in second gear. I view Murray as a second gear fighter. So what you have here is a situation where Golovkin, the champ, the only guy in the ring with big power, right? Golovkin's the one with the punch. Murray doesn't have a punch, right? Certainly nothing on par with what Golovkin has. You have a situation where the puncher in the ring is going to be comfortable with the pacing because Murray fights at a measured pace. So that'll give Golovkin, who likes to start in second gear, and then up the ante. That'll give Golovkin the opportunity to proceed at his own pace in his comfort zone. I think that's bad for Murray. Right? You know, let me say this too. Another guy who would be interesting for Golovkin would be Artur Baturbiov. Now, I personally feel Baturbiov's a limited fighter, right? He's all power and front foot. He got dropped in his last fight. I would encourage you to take a look at that film, right? By a guy who didn't look to have that big a punch. But understand, Baturbiov doesn't fight in second gear, right? He's going to come forward. He's going to pressure He's going to try to walk through Golovkin's punches. That fight would be fascinating, right? Because Baturbiov's style would force Golovkin out of second gear, 
might even make Golovkin go on his back foot, right? I know Baturbiev's a different weight class, but might even force Golovkin to go on his back foot, and that's when you would see some holes in Golovkin's game. We're not fight, you know, he's not fighting Baturbiev here. He's fighting Murray. So he's going to be able to come in the ring in second gear and literally stay there. He's going to be able to cruise a little bit. Murray's not aggressive. Murray's not going to be on his front foot trying to back up Golovkin. Right? Murray wants to play chess. He doesn't want to hunt you. Right? So Golovkin, in terms of pacing, is going to be just fine. Let's talk about spacing. Right? I believe the spacing here is also great for Golovkin. Right? Golovkin doesn't want you up on him. Right? He doesn't want you on his chest. Again, the tape to look at, in my opinion, is the Kasim Uma tape or video here. I would encourage you to Google that. Understand, Uma was at the tail end of his career. He had lost some matches before that. There are moments in that fight where Uma, who is a little bit shorter than Golovkin, gets inside on Golovkin and lets his hands go. That's the worst case for Gennady Golovkin. Right? Because Golovkin likes to be on the outskirts of the pocket. He doesn't want you right up on him in front of him unless he has weakened you or has you retreating. Right? So, Matthew Macklin. He's weakened. He's backing up. Ashida, he's weakened. He's backing up. Daniel Gill, he's weakened. He's backing up, right? They've tasted Golovkin's power. But Golovkin really doesn't want to fight Powell Wolak or Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who's here. He wants to fight a guy who's out there. In other words, the chess player who's a little bit away, right? Mid-range to far range, right? Not a guy who's going to dig a shoulder into him, but a guy who's going to literally do what Murray's going to try to do, play chess from a little bit of a distance, right? So the fact that Murray isn't a crowder, he's not a guy who comes in and tries to muscle you on the inside. The fact that Murray is a tentative guy who likes to operate on the edge of the pocket will be exactly what Golovkin wants, right? Good luck trying to play chess with a puncher on this level, right? Golovkin has one of the hardest punches in the sport. Right? And so I believe Murray is going to come in. Murray thinks he's going to be able to outbox Golovkin. Right? I don't think he's going to be able to. Because the way I see the fight playing out is Golovkin comes out, looks at him, reads him, looks at his angle, starts in second gear for about a round. Right? Is looking at him. Then starts coming forward, cutting off the ring more, and starts throwing punches from weird angles. Let me tell you, in terms of throwing punches from weird angles, Marcus Maidana and James DeGale have nothing on Gennady Golovkin. Right? Golovkin can throw punches from unbelievably weird angles, and he can do so with power. My point to you, too, is... It's difficult to play chess with a guy who leads with power shots, right? Especially power like this, because chess players are looking for patterns, right? A guy like Golovkin is not tipping his hand. Golovkin sees how your defenses and stuff like that, sees what he can get off. And then he's throwing it from distance, right? Golovkin has what I call ring coverage, 
right? So you're looking for a pattern. Here's the first missile. It lands on you, right? A chess player will say, okay, wow, that's a big missile. I need to protect myself from that punch in that situation the next time it happens. The problem with fighting Golovkin is the first situation might be enough. That first missile might hit you so hard that you're weakened for the rest of the fight. Right? So to me, Murray's tailor made for Golovkin. Tailor made for him. Right? Understand there's no height dynamic as there was with Uma, where Murray can get under Golovkin. Murray fights straight up. Right? He's not a guy bending, getting inside on Golovkin. Nor does Murray fight inside or want to fight inside. Right? Murray's a counterpuncher from distance who's trying to, you know, work you over from outside the pocket or the, the outskirts of the pocket. Now, against a Felix Sturm, who's trying to come forward with a jab, right? It's interesting. Against a Sergio Martinez who wants you to pursue him, it's interesting, right? Against a Gennady Golovkin, you're dead meat out there. That's how I see it. Let's talk about this fight further. Tell me what I've gotten wrong. Right? Your comments to these videos don't have to be, Dwyer, I agree with you. They can be, Dwyer, you're full of you-know-what. Here's why. Right? If you feel that I'm mischaracterizing the pace at which Golovkin starts fights, right? Uh, look at the Luan Simon fight, I believe it is. Right? Look at the pace at which Golovkin starts fights. And look at the pace in which... Martin Murray fights fights. Is there film on Martin Murray where he's opening up? Where he's in fourth gear? Where he's pursuing his opponent? If there is, give us the links to those videos and let's all check them out together. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. I think Golovkin wins the fight. I know Murray's never been stopped. You know, really, I'm expecting Murray to be stopped in this fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. At a minimum, I expect Golovkin to win the fight. We'll see what happens. Thanks for stopping by.